Hi, I'm Timmy. And I'm Mary Jane. He's the newbie. She's the doobie. And this is the show where we'd we tote cannabis talk from both sides. Is that even possible? This podcast is for adults only, should not be used as a meal replacement, and may contain nuts. Hey, and welcome back to another episode of The Newbie and the Doobie. My name's Timmy. I am the newbie. Mary Jane, also known as the Doobie. On today's episode, we're going to keep it a little bit shorter because I just celebrated my birthday, and uh, tonight is the celebration day, so... uh, Let's get right into this. We got a little bit of word of the week, and then we'll be bringing in our guest from High Magazine Canada. No. High Canada Magazine. Yes. William Cy. No. No. Cy Williams. Cy Williams. <laughs> Cy Williams from High Canada Magazine is here as our guest. Yes. Uh, but we need to get to your word of the week. Because yes. Mary Jane has been building us through the learning word process, and we got to make sure that that ladder keeps getting built properly, or else I might fell off, fall off. You fell off. I might fell off. You newbie, you. So let's get into word of the week, ladies and gentlemen, here on another episode of The Newbie and the Doobie. What do you got for us, Mary Jane? Okay, so my word of the week is going to be the very first type of concentrate extract that I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about four, okay. at least. That's, see, you think I've got this all planned out. I kind of do, but I don't. So yeah. anyways, the word of the week is keef. Not keef. 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 K-I-E-F. Keef Richards. One of my favorite Rolling no, Stones. No, like Kiefer Sutherland. Oh, what about that Kiefer guy from Big Brother? What Kiefer guy Remember from Kiefer Big Brother? Remember Kiefer Canada? Kiefer. I'm kidding, uh, Kiefer. <laughs> Everybody loved Kiefer. Everybody did. Um... He actually won, like, top, wasn't he, like, a top he was fan favorite? Fan favorite, yes. yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to have a vote on this show, too. Yes. Whoever gets the fan favorite vote, you or me. Oh, I don't want to do that. Okay. Uh, so I win by default because yes. she got out of the competition. Yes. Thank you very much, everybody. No, thank you, MJ. Thank you, MJ. Yes, you're welcome. For winning the first fan favorite award. Thank you. See, I won. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Keith is also known as crystals or cannabis dust. I don't like to call it that because I feel like dust is kind of like angel dust. Yeah, it does. It sounds more right. It sounds, sounds more druggy. Exactly, <laughs> more druggy. It sounds more druggy. <laughs> it's true. It does. It does have like a weird, a weird like sound to it. Um, so basically, what keef is is it's a collection of trichomes. So as I taught you before. Trichomes are the resinous, sticky part of the bud that protects it from the plant or from the sun and the bugs when it's growing. Um, What you do is you can separate the trichomes from the dried flower by sifting it through a screen or Mm -hmm. something called a pollen box, which has multiple layers of the screen. And you can Mm -hmm. just, um, you can also actually get keef from, do you mind passing me that grinder behind you, the one with the peace sign on it? Oh, this is a grinder? I thought you were going to No. No. <laughs> That's only my kids, right? The gnome, oh. the gnome was looking after it. I thought you were just going to say the gnome was looking at you. Okay, so if you look in here, um, in this grinder, you will see that there, if I can get it open, there's a screen in the bottom. Okay, yeah. yeah. Or like in the middle. Sifter. That's exactly what it is. It's a sifter. So that way all of the keef or crystal Mm -hmm. trichomes will go through the screen and collect in the keef catcher. Okay. That's that's what we call them, the little keef catcher. Seems fairly straightforward. Yeah. Then you can take your keef and use it. How? Ah, I was waiting for you to ask how. So you can sprinkle it into a joint. You can put a little bit on top of your bong. You can compress it into little tiny pucks and bricks. And that's actually another form of concentrate called hash, which we'll be talking about next week. So this is an addition to like, so you put flour 
in your paper and then you sprinkle this on top of the flour? So you can. So it is, it's where most of the THC is, is in the trichomes. Okay. So that's the highest form of, um, like the highest concentration of THC. So what a lot of people like to do, now you're going to love this. So uh, you know about oil. Mm -hmm. So if I were to take a joint and then roll it in oil, like dip a little bit of oil on it, yep. and then take my keef and then roll my joint in keef, okay. that's what they call a moon rocket because it's a joint covered in oil, covered in keef. There so you is, light that baby up and bam. It's like out of this world. Okay. All so right. there's also something called a moon rock, which is essentially just a cannabis bud mm -hmm. that they take and dip into an oily concentrate like oil and then roll it in keef. And that, what they're doing is they're they're boosting the THC percentage on the bud because now they've just added, you know, a 70% THC oil to it mm. and, you know, like 40% THC with the, uh, the keef. Okay. So if you bust that up and smoke it, oh my goodness, you're going to be, you're going to be wrecked. <laughs> That's like a lot of THC. All right. So Keef. So Keef. Keef. Wait, is Keef, help me remember this right now, is Keef the first form of concentrate that we're talking about, we've been talking about? Um, it's the first one we're going to talk about today in this like set of yeah. four. Because I've got Keef, Hash, Resin, and Rosin. And then later on, like next next time, I'll talk about wax and butter and. See, this is why. This is why if you are just joining our podcast now, whether through audio or video, you need to go to the beginning because as much as you think you don't have a plan, you have a plan. I I do and I don't. Well, I make it up as I go along, but it's it's really hard for me because I've consumed cannabis for as long as I can remember to the point where it seems like second nature. Mm. So I have to try and think back to what it was like when I first started consuming and try and figure out what did I need to find out? What did I need to learn? Right. Because yeah. there were, okay, times are different. Like first you need to know where do you, where do I get cannabis? And I mean, I've touched very little bit on, you know, you can get it online here in Ontario with the OCS, the Ontario Cannabis Store. Mm -hmm. And I also have touched base on the fact that you can go to a, um, a legal re uh, recreational retail outlet. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I did not walk you through the process of, you know, standing in line, being ID'd, talking to the clerk. Like we didn't go through any of that. Right. But what you just said there is, is super interesting to me because I was hoping that that's what this show would do too is, like you said, you've been using it your entire life. It's like, it's like people who drive now mm -hmm. and are horrible drivers because they've gotten into so many bad habits. They've forgotten actually the, the, the basic rules of driving yeah. and you kind of consume cannabis – not, I don't think, I don't think you do because you're very, I think you're, you're very cerebral with it. You, you, well, at least you teach me enough to make me think that you're cerebral <laughs> about it, but you, you could consume cannabis on, um, auto drive. Like, okay. and, and I'm hoping that what this show does is it, is it, it, it takes, um, that you can break it down for someone like me. Mm -hmm. And in that process, maybe we're even helping other cannabis consumers who have been doing it for longer than you have mm -hmm. and be like, oh, man, when was the last time I heard about Keef? And just have this uh, this educational process because I I don't know, the, the best teaching I think that is ever given, we've been talking a lot about like guys like Mr. Rogers and Mr. Dressup. Yeah. When you have the ability to explain things, especially things as complex as weed is, mm -hmm. is what I'm learning, when you can break it down to its simplest forms again, that's when real learning happens. And so I'm excited every time you do a word of the week, because I think it really does help everybody. Either you're familiar with the word, and if you are, maybe maybe you haven't heard about it in a long time, and it just brings you back mm -hmm. to like, ah, oh, yeah, that's that's cool. And then people like me who are like, I've never heard of Keith, except on Big Brother. Um, yeah. 
So, so yeah. So thank you for words of the week. Oh, and welcome. stay tuned and go back and watch other episodes. Mm -hmm. So, I have heard about Cy Williams. Yes. I met him once at an event. Yes, that's right. Um, a uh, It was an awesome event. We'll just leave it at that. Maybe yeah, we'll get at it. It was later. it was an awesome event. Um, and uh, but uh, you have you have shared about him and the magazine High Canada Magazine. You are wearing a High Canada Magazine shirt. I am sporting the merch. I don't I don't currently have the merch, but maybe we can cut a deal with Cy on that we'll regard. See. So uh, let's bring in our guest for today, Cy Williams from High Canada Magazine. Can we do All that? All right, yeah, let's bring in Cy. And there he is, Cy Williams, uh, all the way from BC, Canada. Hey, Cy. Thank you. Uh, pulled it out just to... I, I love your shirt. I, how come oh. I don't have one of those? Well, you're just getting in to the <laughs> industry, so. All right. You have to actually um, kind of earn a High Canada t-shirt. Do you know I've never sold a High Canada t-shirt? Never, not one. I've had at least a thousand thousands made over the years and we always give them away so if you play your cards right and uh yeah i don't see any reason why you might not be able to go well. yeah well by the way mj made it sound i need to like like put in some dues like how long do i need to hang out with cannabis people before i earn that well not just cannabis uh, oh, people no. hi canada oh uh, it's not so much the people. How much cannabis have you smoked? Have you have you three. hit that level? I've have had you... three um, full joints. Well, maybe three cannabis. Maybe did I finish three them? joints? Okay, three joints, but they were all to yourself. Yeah, yeah. I didn't share them. I didn't pass the duchy to the left hand side. Is that did I use that phrase properly? Or the right? You just hoarded <laughs> it to yourself. Yeah, it's okay. I think that's called microphoning. Yes. Actually, I wish they would make rolling papers that on one end, the filter end, look like the microphone and the other end, you know what I mean? So as it burned every time, you'd just be like putting it up to your lips and <laughs> sorry, am I holding the microphone again? <laughs> <laughs> well, we... I always thought that microphoning went well with karaoke myself. Yes. I don't know if you've had... We've tried to do the stoner karaoke over the years. <sighs> Quite, we haven't got it right yet, so we'll keep working on that. Well, based on all the stuff that I see in your setup here, you could probably teach me a lot. Like Mary Jane has been, uh, you know, this has been probably more educational for me than anybody else during this podcast process. You look like you could probably teach me a ton of stuff. Well, you know, I have to say, uh, I just want to start by saying I am a big fan of the show. Uh, you guys have made me laugh out loud, like seriously in real life. A chuckle. Uh, I I love watching Timmy your education uh, into into the cannabis community because the cannabis community is one of the more complex <laughs> entities or, or cliques, industries, communities that is out there, yeah. and there are more contradictions than actualities. And it has been so much fun watching and listening to MJ kind of fill you in on things. So uh, props to Props to you, MJ. And Timmy, how are you feeling? Are you feeling like you're getting the, the the gist of what she's laying down? I think so. Any hurdles? I have learned I have learned a lot, but I think this is the thing that I'm most impressed with. And it's been a growth process, but hear me out here, Cy. There is five forms of cannabis. Okay. There is well actually there's there's six if it's five A and five B, okay? So <laughs> it's flour, it's tinctures. It's topicals, it's edibles, and it's concentrates slash extracts. Did I get it? Yeah, you know I've seen them on the uh, little uh, the little dissolvables that go on the tongue as well. Uh, I've uh, seen I have suppositories in my fridge. Oh, you uh, never told me about suppositories. Uh, let me think. I think you're missing. I see there any well, more? A suppository would technically be a concentrate. Impressed. Okay. It's still yeah. a concentrated form of cannabis, but you're using it rectally or vaginally. Timmy, how many besides the joint? Have you tried any other forms of cannabis? No, um, but MJ is currently working on getting me to. We're going to do like an edible test. 
Yeah. Well, especially with the legal cannabis being 10 milligrams per package, some of those packages have five pieces in it. So that's only two milligrams per piece. So it's an extremely low dose. And now that you have your... Um... Oh, I blanked out there. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a question for Timmy, if that's okay, if I could jump on yes, your, your last Yes, please do. Screen. Timmy, uh, you're, that first joint you smoked, tell me about it. The first, Okay, the first one I smoked... This is a good story. The, the first one I smoked was down by a river, uh, no van included, and I felt nothing. Now, MJ would have to give you the exact things about the joint, but I felt nothing at all, and I was severely disappointed by that. Oh, I'm so sorry you smoke shit. Yeah, right? Uh, what about your second joint? Yeah, we, we did purchase him low dose. It was about 12% THC the first time. Um, the second mm -hmm. time we got him about 19% THC. Oh, then you got on so, the good shit. And so the he second... smoked two joints in a row because he said, oh, I didn't feel anything the last time and I felt disappointed. So he smoked two joints in a row and this was the I'll day we went bowling top. yeah okay so we went bowling that day and i am a really good bowler a couple 300 games and five pin you know and okay. i my i saw my bowling score get deeply affected and i was already then getting the warning signs that cannabis isn't going to be for me like i can't risk my bowling score you don't understand so si. so you you did not it to be a performance enhancing drug in any way imagine <laughs> that <laughs> quick call the olympics really, eh? it, you found it was very difficult to bowl after smoking those two drugs. Uh, yeah there was no performance enhancing at all now that being said i bowled better than some people i know who weren't high so technically i'm still um, performance enhanced above them that's funny. So, Timmy, yeah. uh, stepping away from that experience and looking back, would you say you had fun? No. Oh, come on. Oh. You kept laughing about how your okay. legs felt fuzzy. Yeah, I was laughing I was laughing because it was um it was unique and I was trying new things and I was kind of enjoying the moment, but the I was giggles. I was absolutely inside very very I was frustrated. Um, I was a little concerned, so there was okay. a there was a mix of emotions. All over the bowling score, though it was over the score. It was the fact that I couldn't function the way that I functioned, and that was it was kind of funny to me, but it was also very concerning and off-putting. Okay, so the third time, you must have decided, geez, this I'm going to give this one more try. Third time, tell me about your third time. Maybe yeah, Timmy does everything in threes. Yeah, Timmy. so I had to go through okay. three. This time, we were sitting at MJ's house, and she. Um, it was twenty three percent. Okay, so yeah, probably. so I jumped up to twenty three. We were having a conversation, okay. well, really good, shit. and I couldn't. Okay. I kept phasing out. I think I was like thinking about unicorns at certain points. And all of a sudden I would come back into the conversation, but realize that I didn't know anything MJ had said over the last 10 minutes. And I'm a communicator and I was, that was it for me. I, I didn't like, I didn't like feeling that I was disjointed from a conversation. But that was my fault because I gave you high THC cannabis, which is meant to chill you out and put on a movie and then proceeded to talk. Hmm. Okay. So there's the context of it, but I can't say that I've okay. had great experiences. Well, it sounds like you, you, you've got a couple problems uh, that you can address very easily. Um, location, mm -hmm. mindset, and activity. You know, I, I would personally, if you want to enjoy your high, I would do something by yourself, have a bath. Uh, I don't know if you've ever tried a bath bomb. Oh, yes. But that is a beautiful, wonderful way. If you're sore after a long day and you want to have a nice, pleasant high, you know, s smoke that J and get into the bathtub with a bath bomb, you know, or go mow the lawn after you've smoked that J and see how much fun that made that task 
or do the dishes. I would, right. uh, I would advise well, not <laughs> cutting the grass after smoking a joint, at least for Timmy. Yeah, I, I you have should a, hear his lawnmower. I story. have a devastating lawnmower story that uh, might change your mind on that. But little known facts, you, you I see where I'm going though. I right? do see where you're going, and I just want to throw this out here because not a lot of people know this, but I actually owned and ran a bath and body shop where bath bombs were the primary product for three years. Interesting fact. So you're familiar? Or you, you know the way of the bath bomb? I don't know how to make them. I was, <laughs> I was being taught. You know how to use them? What's that? Do you know how to use them? I know how to use them, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. You're halfway there. I'm halfway there. See, I'd like you to have a tincture or um, like now they have caps, right? The capsules. Mm -hmm. You can literally just have a capsule. All right. Well, listen. I've I've told I've told M M J that M J M J M J M J. I'm hearing the echo in my ears, and it's throwing me off. But I've told M J I'm I'm not closed off to the whole thing. Uh, I sh I like sharing the cannabis smoking stories. But I've also now learned all the different other forms, and I've also realized you're talking about the cannabis community being a complex community. I have recently began to use the phrase, weed doesn't equal weed. It's a very complex plant that I am learning about so many things and, and dose size and form. And like you're saying, where you're with, who you're with, all those things play a, play a role in how you can enjoy it. And if I could mention, there are a lot of people out there who are THC sensitive, who want to enjoy cannabis and all the benefits that come with cannabis. But you know what? They don't like or can't handle being that high. They're not, they're not comfortable. Uh, a, a little bit of THC goes a long way. And I, I know a number of people, but they're still find ways to uh, recognize that the cannabis can be great. Mm. And, you know, microdosing is a big thing. Not always, you know, maybe if you have three or three to five bad experiences smoking joints, maybe switch to a pipe oh. or, you know, I wouldn't recommend dabs for you, Timmy, but when I come to Ontario, I would love to sit down and teach you how to, to dab before you go to the, any of these big parties <laughs> and someone's going to drop a gram on your poor ass. See, we've discussed that. And I'm like, that's the nastiest <laughs> thing somebody can do to another person as cannabis users. I'm like, don't do that. I'm a baby hitter. I use my shatterizer and most people are like, yeah. Did you even smoke anything? And I'm like, yeah, man, I got some. I got baby, yeah, baby props lungs. Yeah, the shatterizer people. Me too. I love my shatterizer, and I, I don't like being dabbed out. And I walk up to the counter, and they go, oh, oh, look, it's the publisher of that magazine. Let's see what we can do to them. Yeah. And uh, they drop it. I, I see it. I'm like, I, I can't do it. I can't do that. I'll cough for like 25 minutes, right. and then... Who knows when my consciousness is actually going to return to me? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's take a moment to talk about that magazine. Um, you're the that magazine. You're the magazine. CEO, the editor, the, the I assume. Did you found it? I did. I did. Okay. And they we're talking about High Canada founder. Magazine. So tell us, because I'm interested in knowing how did you start it? Why did you start it? Okay. So I used to run a gallery in Kensington Market a number of years ago. Uh, it was called Cast, and uh, it was for emerging artists within the uh, Canadian artistic scene. Did pretty well, but we had a real hard time finding sponsors for our shows, people to get behind us, finding funding. I was writing grants all the time. Um, we were struggling to keep it all together. And uh, it was about the same time as... Um, the emergence of the cannabis dispensary market. And I'm a, I am went to school for fine arts studio um, and English literature. And I'd, uh, I'd worked as a copywriter. I'd worked as an ad man for a big chunk of my career before switching over entirely to, to art um, in 2000. Um, and I recognized an opportunity for this marginalized group to find some funding to keep going. Um, and it didn't work out that way, but it got me in and I'd smoked cannabis my entire life, um, since I was a, a teenager yeah. and it was a big part of my life. It's been a big part of uh, a lot of the things that I've done over my life. Um, and I didn't really, I've never had a problem personally with the 
plant. And I have a problem with people who are persecute people mm. for using a plant. And I've always maintained this. Uh, it belongs to the people. Uh, we should be allowed to use it however we want. There's the list level of regularization or legalization or regulation, even back mm. back then. And back then it was an illegal dispensary market. Mm-hmm. So when I realized that I couldn't merge the legal art uh, art stuff with uh, with the emerging black market dispensary markets, I saw there was an opportunity. I looked around and there was nothing. I had heard of a magazine called Cannabis Culture. Never actually seen it. There was um, the Treating Yourself Expo had gone on around that same time, and it was a big thing in the cannabis community. It was the first time we ever had a show out here that was well attended, uh, good good vendors, good education, good information. And that was uh, Marco, uh, and he was based at Vape. I don't know if you ever heard the uh, the now defunct vape shop uh, or, or lounge, uh, Vape by the Lake on Lakeshore. Yes, but uh, he had a treating yourself magazine that was de- devoted to educating medical patients about cannabis, and this is where nobody knew anything. Hmm. Uh, one in a hundred people you spoke to would have heard of cannabis in a medicinal way or a way that wasn't associated with stupid potheads or lazy uh, hippies. And then I, I looked, I, I found some old copies and I realized Marco had left the country and there was a vacuum. There was nothing. So, you know, I was a creative person. Um, we, uh, the gallery, uh, I, I wound up leaving the gallery and uh, partnering up with one of, uh, the, one of the bigger, uh, bigger cannabis groups in, um, in Toronto at the time the uh, Marijuana Information Bureau, and uh, the Men in Black. We started the MIB. Rope, MIB. Men in Black, right? We did the scavenger hunts at High Park, <laughs> and uh, did a lot of those crazy events. We we went through a a, a gr- uh, I, I was involved with Nui Blanche as an artist, um, and uh, we uh, as an underground artist. So I tied it in, and we did a, a Nui Vert where uh, we, we rented uh, some space at Spadina and Queen in the buildings behind, and we got this hotboxed uh, bouncy castle going with, like, stoner movies going all night. Because sure enough, 500 people showed up to bounce in our stoner bouncy castle, yeah, our hotbox, uh, which is a lot of fun. So I ran Rolling Stone magazine, which was a totally in-your-face, No, I broke every single rule there was out there for 10 issues. And I established our distribution through the through the gray market, through the dispensaries that were popping up in every neighborhood uh, in 2014, 2015. And um, and then I was asked to stop using the Rolling Stone name. I got a very nice request, nice. Um, which I thought it, it was time. Um, I had just taken, uh, I had applied for and was successful. And uh, I was one of the 10 for 10 Nui Blanche artists. Hmm. Uh, with Nui, Nui Blanche, I don't know if you know what it is. It's an all-night arts festival yep. that runs in the city of Toronto. So I was chosen to be one of their 10 commemorative artists for their 10-year celebration, 10 for 10. So that I was uh, given the Bata Shoe Museum at Spadina and Bloor, and I built a, an installation there. And I, I built a scaffolding bridge that you walk under. And we had about 5,000 people donate shoes to hang off the bridge, and they all wrote their personal stories hmm. Uh, on the shoes. That's beautiful. And I, there was a morality clause in my City of Toronto contract that if I was involved in certain activities, that I would not receive the grant money needed to. I wouldn't get. Basically, I'd be booted out. Okay. So I waited until the day was that a week after my Nui Blanche installation, which, by the way, went over amazingly well. We had Henry Winkler showed up, nice. and Mrs. That's Bather herself, and we had. People coming through all night long. Uh, I encourage you to look it up on uh, on, on on the interweb. But um, right after that was done, I started High Canada. I, I saw the writing on the wall. I recognized the need for education and information. I realized that I couldn't play it like a vast and loose cowboy anymore, that I had to at least start maintaining ourselves to a better standard. Mm-hmm. We built a we built we built a team again. We've we've had so many wonderful members of our team. MJ was a member of our team for a while. Hey, member and for it was life. A to have her. Uh, really was. Um, and we're uh, it, it's allowed us to build over the last six years this amazing community. Because what happens is every month we put out an issue. We try to cover 
30 or so things going on in the Canadian international cannabis community and focus on like some women and weed and great women there who are in the industry who are like doing amazing things and advocates and teachers and and yeah we throw in a little bit of business but it's always about community mm. um and we do that every month so imagine how many people i've met how many athletes yeah. and doctors and patients and uh, just people activists and uh, people who are so passionate about the plant and the coolest thing timmy uh the coolest thing is that Almost every single person I've spoken to, cannabis has changed their life in a positive way. Right. So it kind of makes me sad that you haven't had a positive experience yet. But I guarantee you, if you keep experimenting and put some faith in the universe, that you will have a positive experience. Well, I'm a big, um, I'm a big education guy. Not in the public education. I, I, I have no desire to go into school or whatever. But what this process is doing is breaking down years of no information and the more information i'm getting the more i'm going okay maybe maybe i misjudged it a second time again because obviously my first misjudgment was based on nothing um i thought it was but it, it was it was kind of like the lack of information was wrong information if that makes sense it's disinformation yeah so yeah there's been a lot of disinformation yeah. Jimmy. Uh, so i think though yes. what what i'm getting from this show and one of the reasons why we wanted to do it was because there's tons of people like me who were shut out of it been told a whole lot of wrong things and yet they know people who smoke it medicinally or recre recreationally you know they have kids they have uh, their their senior parents we were talking with mimi cannabis about people yeah. over 55 being one of the gr bigger yeah. de demographics and as we're hoping to teach those people listening. I'm learning a lot too. So I'm not opposed. I, I think you might be right, Cy. There, there's going to be something in the future where I'm, where another opportunity is going to rise up and uh, maybe it'll be a positive experience. I'm doing well, this show not to be the opposite of MJ. Um, I'm still trying to speak positively and trying to figure it out. Yeah. Oh, Jimmy, could I... I I actually have a really good recommendation for sure. you. How's your overall physical health? How are you feeling? Are you on a scale of one to 10? What are you right now? Like right now, after a long day of driving and recording four episodes? Yeah, right now. This is very sucky. Feel tired. Yeah. On a scale of one to 10. On a scale of one to 10? Like a six or a seven? I don't know. I feel like a seven physically, emotionally, mentally. Okay. I'm I'm up there at the nine. Yeah. Good for you. Okay. Have you ever tried? Can I want I want you to try smoking CBD flower, high CBD, CBD flower. CBD flower. Because you know a lot of people who smoke cannabis and they they smoke and they go yeah you know it's not, it's, it's it's great it's cool I guess it fucks up my bowling score and uh, you know <laughs> I worry too much or I get peril or I eat everything in my fridge but then they switch over to CBD flower and they hmm. get this. You, more of a euphoric feeling, a better sense of being, a better sense of overall health. I'd recommend, you know, maybe looking at that side of the cannabis coin because there's a lot to explore there. And uh, I could personally make sure you get some CBD flower. There are some amazing growers in Ontario and, uh, uh, you know, hemp flower is going to be is, is going to be the big thing that is coming out. Uh, that people really don't aren't talking about. They're still talking about cannabis, the cannabis part of it, but the CBD part of it and that flower is going to uh, is going to take, overtake the world. Especially when you start seeing uh, hemp cigarettes, they're going to be used as a smoking cessation tool. I've seen and, those. You know, actually, people are going to be them. smoking. The, that is going to be the product that takes the world by storm over the next two years. Mark my words. You have me back on your show in two years, and we can talk about the evolution of hemp cigarettes in Canada. And you can prove that you're right, me, that and we'll pull be... up this exact clip. So the only yes. thing I would say about that is Timmy is a health-conscious person, and I don't really see him smoking again. Maybe vaping. Maybe. But I could see you wanting to try edibles, tinctures, things like that, because you know not smoking's not healthy. I would try a suppository hmm. for either my IBS or for my premenstrual dysphoria oh. disorder. 
and actually that's what this is intended for. I keep them on a case of emergency mm -hmm. and I've had people in the past ask me for these for both those reasons. Yep. Um, Crohn's as well. It's, uh, yeah, any gastro stuff that uh, you're really suffering, this, this really helps, you know, and just th there is the whole medical side of it that people are using cannabis to deal with extreme pain instead of pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, there's some of those massive doses, you know, where they might be good for somebody who's in pain who has that tolerance. God, it would probably knock out Joe or Jane average um, with the doses they're taking. So there's there's so many different sides to cannabis. Yeah, well, that's what I'm learning. What about what about in the in the media in particular? Ever since I've kind of, we've started this podcast and we've been trying to promote it through different media outlets and social media in particular, there's a lot of people getting, you know, the algorithm is crushing it. In terms of writing a magazine, what has changed in that since you started writing? Like, like are restrictions there? Like, how do you find getting the word out about cannabis through the magazine format? Um, for a long time in my professional career, I'm 53 this year. Um, I have used the, um, the expression, um, ask for forgiveness, not permission, uh, probably very liberally in my life. Okay. And I know for a fact, and you can go check this out if you like, Health Canada has never issued a financial fine to anyone for breaking any marketing rules. They, they've, if there have been marketing letters put out there to companies, they're never been publicized mm. from companies like all the big LPs. If you go in bathrooms and nightclubs across Canada, you walk around Alberta or Edmonton and you see legal cannabis advertised on bus stops. And, um, you know, we've, we're, it's when, when we went to when, okay, I should actually finish. Do you mind if I finish the, the, the second part of my high Canada origin story? Oh, sure. Yeah. Cause we had a transition around legalization. Yeah. Okay. So when legalization rolled around, we were told to comply that uh, we were giving a list of marketing rules and regulations. 90% of the businesses, the entrepreneurs, the people that I had worked with for the last three years and in the capacity uh, magazine editor, the uh, most of my advertisers were told, you, you come to our side or else. Mm -hmm. And it changed everything. And a lot of people, people thought they would be grandfathered in. There were companies out there trying to purchase and regulated brands with the promise that they would protect them and umbrella them in. Um, there are tons of people, scores of people who worked in underground dispensaries who had done this for the last number of years, who had built up skill levels where there was no education out there for this or training for this kind of work, who had suddenly found themselves unable to work in the legal industry. So with that one issue, we, we transitioned and did our very best to transition over and comply for uh, since October uh, 2018. Since, since now it's 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I watched so many advertisers, friends of mine, companies fall to the wayside after that legalization and now after Corona. Um, it, it's very, very disheartening to see. And um, when we made that transition, we went, we did it with the best optimism the most optimism we could have you know it's not just me we have a big team of uh people who contributors or people who put into this concept and idea of high canada uh, magazine um we run it like an arts collective so there's a lot of voices and a lot of moving parts mm -hmm. but to see so many of those moving parts get thrown to the wayside and see so many people who picked up charges because they were a bud tender at the wrong place at the wrong time unable to transition over i have seen more people turn their back on cannabis the cannabis community over the last since legalization than probably any other time in my uh, cannabis career and that was a little disheartening yeah. so after two years plus of trying to follow the rules we are finally we, we i threw up my hands uh about six eight months ago and uh i I participated in the, uh, uh, the online cannabis store, which is uh, an online uh, cannabis dispensary, remembering our cannabis roots, thinking about, you know, there's, we still, the online mark, uh, cannabis dispensary uh, market is still huge. Uh, sorry about that, Sai. I think we got, we lost your feed for a little bit. Could you just go back and kind of recap some of what we may have missed? <laughs> no problem. You know, I was probably uh, speaking 
uh, at length about our second transition around legalization, where we uh, we did, we as a group decided to uh, to uh, try to comply to the best of our abilities to uh, all the new legal marketing restrictions. Uh, as a result, you know, of the legalization, uh, I know we saw the rise of the new legal dispensaries, the rise of LPs. But um, there was an entire industry built up to that point of entrepreneurs, a lot of people who took charges uh, for simply being bud tenders or working at the wrong place at the wrong time, at the wrong grow, because, uh, you know, they were involved in unregulated cannabis. And uh, we, we made a really good try of it. Uh, we, we, we tried to stick to legal topics. But you know what? The legal market was pretty much, well, you've worked with the you know, black market. We can't advertise with you. I know so many legal producers, people who are work with legal pro the, the, the setting of a legal producer. I have friends and work at so many different companies. And every time, besides content, after we tried to comply, uh, I was all, it always came down to what the lawyers had to say. And the lawyers were never cool with uh, uh, licensed producers um, advertising or promoting or even having any sort of branding in, in this sort of magazine. And so we, we were working under that, that there, were, there was no legal uh, revenue stream for us. And at that point, we, had let, we unfortunately had to say goodbye to all of our black market advertising, which pretty much sliced our throat uh, uh, right. financially. Luckily, we had the foresight to start our High Europe magazine brand, which focuses on cannabis on an international uh, uh, oh, wow. uh, but, and, and, and with an international focus and that has been very well received we've done a five city tour that got canceled unfortunately at the beginning of the, the pandemic we're due back there in august to do uh, another five city tour and we're we're co uh, media sponsoring the uh, international business uh cannabis conference the icbc which and so uh that's been able to sustain high canada uh at the peak of the crisis we were um our printer our printers needs and uh, our lack of advertisers pretty much dictated that we had to go to a digital only platform and we've been a digital only platform for about nine months and I have to tell you it sucks 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 so bad and we still get great engagement we still still this magazine but we've uh, over the last couple of months we've uh, we've said we've, we've had to we've really had to decide that we've had to um, restart it one more time. So I've been working diligently through the crisis, building new partnerships to take High Canada Magazine into a legal, as a true legal magazine. We're not going to just be a free magazine that's uh, available at dispenser uh, or black market dispensaries or at head shops or quite possibly if you get it mailed out to you. Now we're going to be a hundred percent all new, all legal. We're shortening the name from High Canada Magazine to HCM. We're going to be distributing our, our new magazine, our new legal cannabis magazine, through legal legal shops in seven provinces. We have um, licensed producers who finally now, uh, they're open-minded enough after so many years, uh, so much time, to start working with some some groups like ourselves. So we're, um, once uh, there are contemporaries, uh, once I realized that... Uh, a lot of the um, the advertising restrictions do not apply to uh, shows. So all licensed producers mm -hmm. and all their brands are allowed to put placements in all those show catalogs. And then I noticed that there were a few smaller companies, newer magazines, that were also uh, distributing through the legal uh, legal shops. And uh, I found out that it just as an it's an in-house magazine. So a lot of the restrictions that we've had poured upon our shoulders for the last two and a half years no longer apply mind you it means that we can no longer talk about our black market roots our legacy roots or our friends in the black mm -hmm. or in the unregulated community because in order to play in this particular playground we have to follow every rule that there is which is great right. and i'm i'm happy that we're able to make this hopefully third and final transition um with the high canada magazine brand um we're bringing with it six years of community, um, a dozen high Canada magazine um, correspondents and representatives across the country. So we're really excited about this new move. I'm hoping that we're working on the new issue right now, this first legal issue, and we're looking at having it in stores in seven provinces um, by probably mid-August. Uh, 
So actually, you heard it here first. We've been keeping it pretty quiet. Um, we had a giant yearbook issue as our last final unregulated issue, last issue. We had pretty much, it was 300 pages of photos. And to be honest, it could have been a thousand. Because I'm a, I'm a collector. I have collected right. photos from so many events, from so many things, from so many shoots, from so many stories that I, I could have filled a thousand pages. Um, hmm. But yeah, we, we closed that out last issue. That's awesome. That was a good issue. Well, you I were love, in there. Um, were you in there? <laughs> Maybe. Nice. Um, I love how you, as you've talked about the magazine and, and the passion is clear behind it, which is, you know, the driving force bef behind anything that's going to be successful. But you talked about how you do a lot of stories, people telling their stories. And one of the things we wanted to do here is is have people hear our stories. And one of the things that I love to do to learn is not in the textbook, but I love reading biographies and seeing documentaries of, you know, of people's lives. Um, I guess my question in regards to all that with the magazine, do you have any sense of are non-consumers getting a chance to hear these stories? Like, does this magazine, has it crashed, has it crossed out into a non-consuming audience? Do you know that at all? I do. I, um, you know, it's funny. We have a very, we have, a, we had an interesting evolution of our audience. We started building subscribers to, uh, with uh, Rolling Stone magazine, where it was consumers purchasing from black market dispensaries. And then we transitioned over, um, when we transitioned over, we, we started, I noticed where 60% of the people, because we we're doing all the shows, it was B2B. So suddenly we had all these B2B uh, readers and subscribers and, you know, 60% for a number of years of our readers were, were businesses within the cannabis community. And there was a big rise of entrepreneurs a number of years ago and everybody and their dog was getting into the cannabis game, my friend. Um, <laughs> And, and a lot of people lost money on that, but a lot of people made some money too. Uh, it was a different, it was a lot different than it is today where you, you have to jump through a lot more hoops. Um, luckily, uh, with the new magazine, we are the, some of the groups that we've uh, laterally connected with are helping a lot of legacy brands step up. You know, and that's really important to me to see that uh, people who worked in the legacy market from every, from growers to bud tenders, uh, manufacturers, anybody who's been in there should be allowed the opportunity to step out, um, you know, and, and work in this market and not be shut out or penalized or placed in jail. Uh, I have a lot to say on that topic, so I probably should. Uh, I know we don't have a lot of time. Wow. Well, we, we yeah, we do. We do need to start wrapping it up. Uh, MJ, do you have anything you want to add here at the end? I don't actually. I'm a little slow today. Can you tell? It's really <laughs> hot in here, and it's the end of the day, and I'm really hungry. What we need to do oh. is go get a a nice place out where Sai is, which looks so peaceful and chill and relaxed. Nice. Yes. No. We need see, a studio no. where I can smoke. Oh, see, I, I love my place. I can smoke anywhere, and I love that. I can smoke while I'm walking around the lake. I can smoke walking down the road with my dogs. I can smoke anywhere. So, hey, but the only downside is, you know what? I get love letters from Domino's. We miss you, Cy. Come back to us, Cy. I, I used to live in Toronto. I would order That's Domino's funny. 16 times a week. They miss me. I miss them, too. You know, Domino's, if you're listening, get me delivery. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. We'll 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 That's use true. our many contacts and figure what we can do. Thank you. I need a uh, yeah. sorry, we I want to thank you for here. spending time with us today and for sharing your story and for talking about the magazine and from one artist to another. I can't speak for MJ, but uh, it's just so awesome to see somebody who's so passionate about what they're doing, who's being able to sustain themselves doing what they love. That's so encouraging for me. And um, I just hope you can continue to tell the stories because I think stories are more important than stats and all the technical mumbo jumbo. So tell the stories and hopefully more and more people will understand more about this complex plant in the community. I agree, Timmy. It's been a real pleasure. And um, you know what? Who knows? Maybe I'll be able to participate in your cannabis journey to, uh, to some degree. <laughs> Well, technically, you already have today. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you to say. 
MJ, it's always a pleasure. Timmy, it's nice to make it real quick. It's nice to meet you, my friend. Thanks, Thanks so much, much, Cy. We'll talk to you soon. Appreciate it. Sounds good. Thank you. Cy Williams, Hi yeah. Canada Magazine. That or wait, it's just actually uh, Hi. Wait, HCM. What is it? HCM? That's right, HCM. Nice. Uh, that setting that he was in um, was, uh, I don't know if it was just the way he just had everything laid out on the table, but I mean, in like, you know, the sleeveless shirt, the, the, the natural light coming through the window, it just looks so spacious, like, cause it's, it's partially office space there, right? See, I was just watching the room fill up and get more cloudy as, uh, as the episode like, went like on. It like such a, 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 that was cool. a good, um, a good working environment and, um. It definitely looks chill. Yeah, yeah, and it's just once again, it's just so good to see somebody who's who's passionate about what they do and and loves what they do. Um, so few people can do what they love, mm -hmm. and it looks like he, you know, he's he's doing what he loves. He's he's an artist, and he's got a a purpose behind his art. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was good. It was a good chat. I like talking with him. Yeah, I met him once at at a what we we did. It was a Playboy Mansion event oh yes and i think I, I met him once we we were in the bat we went into the back courtyard of this downtown yeah <laughs> it was quite the event yeah um and it went to the actually the what's courtyard. really funny is at that event he was discussing the the last magazine that he was just talking about oh, okay 300 photos or was it 300 pages yeah, 300 like, pages yeah that was because that was a couple years a couple about two yeah. years ago yeah so that was cool uh, so check out High Canada Magazine. Yeah. HCM. HCM, which will be at a legal cannabis store near you. Near you. And Hopefully. those things those things are popping up all over the they're more frequent. Even my dad. My dad's not a consumer. Even my dad sent me a message or something like that. He says he says there's like there's like cannabis stores like on every block now. He's pretty you know, soon they're gonna be like uh Tim Hortons and roller rinks right? used to be. That's right. Yeah. Move from, from roller rinks to Tim Hortons to cannabis shops. It's a constant transition. A progression, yeah. It is. Well, I enjoyed that conversation. It was another good episode. Yeah. Um what is that? Number fifteen. Is that number fifteen in the books? I yeah, I lost track four episodes yeah. ago. Can't believe it. It's been a good ride. Sure Looking has. forward to many more episodes coming up. Hope you guys have been enjoying it. Go back to the very beginning. Follow the journey because I'm learning. As you saw as we were talking with Sai, I'm learning stuff, but I'm learning it in order. MJ is is walking us through steps through her words of the week mm -hmm. um, and the teaching Timmy segments. So go back to the beginning. Check out. Listen through podcast. Um, check it out through uh, YouTube. And uh, we'll leave uh, links for Sai. Um, down in the description boxes of whatever format you're watching it in. So once again, um, I'm Timmy. Mary Jane, stay lifted. And keep on laughing. Bam. Cheers. Cheers.